and today we're going to be doing Junior Beginner Session 7 on decimals. Before you continue watching, make sure to like and subscribe. The topics we're going to be covering today are a number review, place value, decimals as fractions, and decimal operations. Our first topic of today is a bit of a number review. And let's start with the types of numbers. Our first type of number is the natural numbers. These are our counting numbers, or the ones that we can count on our hand and so on. And they are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on to infinity. Our next type of numbers are the whole numbers. These are basically the natural numbers or the counting numbers, except we also have zero in this. So our whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on until infinity. Continuing on with our types of numbers, we have our integers. And these are basically our positive and negative number, whole numbers. And they also include zero because Zero is neither positive nor negative, so remember that. And some examples are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. It doesn't start at negative two and it doesn't end at two, but those are just some examples. It goes forever in that direction and forever in that direction. And our last type of number that we're gonna do today is the rational numbers. These are our fractions. And some examples are one half, one fourth and three sixteenths. Our last part of the number review is the number line. This is a part of a number line because the number line is infinite in both directions. That's why it's a line. Anyways, on our number line, we have the numbers negative three, negative two, negative one, negative one half, zero, one half, one, one and a half, two, and three. So that's why it's only a tiny part because the number line is infinite. Going back to our number line, let's start with our types of numbers. We have negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1, which fall into our negative numbers category. And our negative numbers are the, all the numbers that fall to the left of 0, as if they are left, they are not left, they are less than 0. And then we have 0, which is neither positive nor negative, so remember that. And then we have our rational numbers, or our fractions, which are represented in red. They're negative 1 half, 1 half, and 1 and a half. Those are all, only some of them. Now let's move on to our integers. Our integers are all of these. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Not these rational numbers. The integers do not include the rational numbers. And then we have our natural numbers, or our positive numbers, or our counting numbers. Which 1, 2, 3, and so on. Like I said before, they're the ones you can count on your finger. And then we have our whole numbers which are our natural numbers, including zero. And they're in orange. So we have zero, we have one, we have two, and we have three, and so on. Our second topic of today is place value. And place value means what it says. It's the value of the place of the number. For example, let's say we have the number 328. The place that the three is in is a hundreds. And if you don't have the rest of it, it'll represent 300. The 2 is in the tens place, and it represents 20, and the 8 represents 8 because it's in the ones place. How you tell where which is what place is, the number, there would be a decimal point right here. The number directly to the left of it is your ones, then you have your tens, then your hundreds, then so on. And let's talk about place value to the right of the decimal. This is our decimal point. Immediately to the right, we have our tenths. Do not confuse it with our tens because they're completely different. One is to the left, one is to the right. You can notice the difference with the th. Then we have our hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands. I probably spelled it wrong, but that's how it sounds. You don't want to confuse it with the ones to that side. Our next topic of today is decimals as fractions. And to do this, let's do some examples. We start off with 3.2. We can rewrite this as 3 and 2 tenths. The reason for this is because 2 is in the tenths place, meaning there are 2 tenths. We can read three, this as 3.2 or 3 and 2 tenths, which this is also 3 and 2 tenths. So let's also go to 3.22. We have 3 and 22 over 100. And let's do one more before we establish a pattern. 
3.222 is equal to 3 and 222 over 1,000. Now, you might need to notice, notice a pattern. The number of numbers after the decimal point are how many zeros we have. We have one, two, we have one zero. We have two twos, we have two zeros. We have three twos, we have three zeros. So now we'll try 3.2, well, it's 3.2222. And you may have guessed it, we're gonna have four zeros because of the four twos. So we have three and two, 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 over 10,000. So as a little bit of an exercise for us, let's try 3.2222. Five twos. Well, we're going to keep the three the same because it's the whole number part. And then we're going to change this decimal part to a fraction. It's one, two, three, four, five twos, meaning five zeros. So we'll write two, 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 two as the numerator and five zeros as denominator, which gives us this. Our last topic of today is decimal operations. And let's start with addition because it is the easiest. So there are three main steps. The first step is to line the decimal points up. So let's do that for 3.23 and 4.56. So we're first gonna write the decimals. And then we're gonna write the rest of the number. And then, so that's the first step. Then we bring the decimal point down. This DP stands for decimal point because I'm too lazy to write decimal point. So we're going to bring it down, straight down. And then we add normal. 3 plus 6 is 9. 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. So our answer is 7.79. Now let's try another harder example. We first line the decimal points up, write accordingly. Notice that this is 93.42. So we have the decimal points. And the 3 corresponds with the 5. So, and the 9 is in a separate column. Writing down the thing incorrectly can ruin the entire problem. So now let's add. But before we do that, we bring the decimal down. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 7 plus 4 is 11, but we can't fit 11 in there, so we're going to carry the 1. We get 1 plus 5 plus 3, which is 9. And 9 plus 0 is 9. So we have 93.15 as our answer. Now we're going to move on to decimal subtraction. It's the same thing as decimal addition, but instead of adding at the end, you're subtracting. So let's do an example. We have 32.14 minus 17.78. So our first step, line up the decimal points. So let's first write our decimal points, and let's write our numbers. It's important to write in the numbers correctly, or else you'll get the problem. bring our decimal point down. And now we subtract normally. So 4 minus 8 is not possible because 4 is less than 8. So we're going to take this one, we're going to make it a 0, make this 4 of 14. 14 minus 8 is now 6. 0 minus 7 is impossible, so we're going to carry, make that 2 of 1. That 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. 1 minus 7 is impossible, so we're going to make that 3 of 2, make that 1 and 11. 11 minus 7 is 4, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So our answer is 14.36. Now we're going to move on to our last decimal operation because we're not going to do division yet because that's a bit complicated. Multiplication. So the steps in this are a bit different. We line the numbers up, we multiply normally, and then we move the decimal. So remember the difference between addition and subtraction and division. So as an example, let's do 2.3 times 4.5. By lining up the numbers, I mean, first we write the numbers, and then we add the decimal point in. The decimal point's right there and right there. Now we're going to multiply the number. 5 times 3 is 5, carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. 4 times 3 is 2, so we're going to carry the 1 again. 4 times 2 is 8, carry the 1, 9. So we're going to add these, 5, 3, 10. So now we do our moving the decimal point. So we look. So how many numbers are to the right of this decimal point? Well, there's one for this one. And how many are to the left of, right of this one? 
make one. So we're going to add that to. Right now, our decimal point is technically over here. So we're going to move it two places. One, two. Meaning our answer is 10 point three our first problem of today is the following. You go to the store and buy three pencils and two erasers. A pencil is $1.25 and an eraser is $1.01. You have a $2.99 off coupon that you use. How much do you pay? If you read this, you can notice that you will notice that we're using multiplication, addition, and subtraction in that order. Let's start with finding out how much we're paying for the pencils. Each pencil is $1.25 and we're buying three pencils, meaning we're doing $1.25 times three, which is $3.75. Now let's find the cost of, an erase, of our erasers. Each eraser is $1.01 and we're buying two of them. $1.01 times two is $2.02. Now we're going to add these two to find out how much total we're paying so far. So $3.75, we're going to line the decimal, bring the decimal down. And then add normal. 2 plus 5 is 7. 0 plus 7 is 7. 2 plus 3 is 5. Meaning the sum of these two is 577. That's how much we're paying so far. Now we have that 299 off coupon. So we're doing 577 minus 299. We align the decimals, bring the decimal down, and subtract normal. 7 minus 9 can't be done because 7 is less than 9, so we're going to cut that off. Make that 17 while making that a 6. 17 minus 9 is 8. 6 minus 9 is impossible, so we're going to cross that off. Make that a 15 while we make that a 4. 15 minus 9 is 16 minus 9 is 7. 4 minus 2 is 2. And that's our answer. Our last problem of today is the following Change 1.78 to a fraction. Well, we have 1.78. And like we did before, we count. We first count how many numbers are to the right of the decimal point. So we have one, two, meaning there's going to be two zeros after the one in the denominator. So we would write this as one and 78 over 100. Now, something that we notice is they're both divisible by two, meaning we divide them both by two. And the reason for this is we're calling this simplifying. And we can divide them both by 2 because technically 2 divided by 2 is 1. So you're technically dividing by 1. It's not a lot of technicallys, but it works. Because when you divide something by 1, it gives you the same thing. So you're dividing by 2 over 2, so 78 divided by 2 is 39. 100 divided by 2 is 50. And your answer is 1 and 39 fiftieths. I'm Cyrus from Uncle Nassau, and I'm here to teach problem 1. In the other math circle, natural number. First, let's read this question. Annie earned $8.50 an hour for the first 40 hours. She works each week. For every hour, she works overtime. She earns 1.5 times her regular hourly wage. If he worked 44 hours last week, how much money did he earn? Let's find out step one. Let's read the first sentence. 
together. 1, that's 8.50. So let's multiply 8.5 to 1.5. 8.5 times 1.5. Let's multiply. We don't need to matter what matter of the zeros. Also. 5 times 5, 25, 2 and 9. 8 times 5, 40, plus 2, 42. 1, 5 times 1, 5. 8 times 1, 8. Multiply 5, 7. What can say 12? 1, 2 digits. There it is. And 12.75. So, so, so it equals to 12.75. We are going to find out step 3. So let's read the 3. If he, she worked 44 hours last week, how much money did he earn? We are found a 40 dollars. 40 hours, that would be between 40 dollars. Four hours are the money, so we have to find out that. So that's why we're multiplying four. But why are we multiplying to twelve point seven five? It's because we have to multiply to the overtime and then the step two answer twelve point seven five. So four times twelve point seven five. So let's start with one by four times twelve point seven five. Twelve point seven five times Four equals two. Five times four, twenty. Two and nine. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Plus two is thirty. Two and nine. Four, three, two times four is eight. Plus two is eleven. Two and nine. One times four, four. Plus one, five. Plus two, one. Four times zero, zero. That's equal to twenty-one. So four.
any questions, you can email info at agoramagical.org or comment below and we'll reply back. Maybe. And if you want to see practice things or anything about us, you can visit our website, which is basically the end of the email, but without the info and the yet.